name is Benjamin Re. I'm, I'm replacing actually our, my colleague Christian Salz, who was supposed to talk here today, but he unfortunately um, got the flu, so I just jumped in quite quickly. So our small um, part of our group um, consists of uh, several PhDs, several master and bachelor students, and I'm more or less just associated yet because my research topic lies somewhere else. I'm actually a physicist and computer engineering. Um, so yeah, I'll just jump in. Um, yeah, and we are doing reconstructions from <laughs> different objects, archaeological objects in uh, 3D, and we use yeah, for drones and other vehicles. Um, so, so basically, I, uh, we can assume that everyone knows about the uh, structure for motion, which is we take a lot of pictures and then we get something in 3D out of it. Here, for example, we just have um, an example of the uh, King's Hall in Lodge. And uh, this is one visualization with a lot of pictures that we took over time and did a reconstruction from. And basically, we also have um, a real light, uh, laser scan, which we can compare to our reconstruction. And um, so we can evaluate how precise our reconstruction is. And for example, just to see in this case, we have uh, um, the yellow or uh, the dark blue parts of uh, but about two centimeters. Um, inaccurate, so we can agree that structure for motion is an adequate method for taking such uh, 3D objects. But the question is, do we really need so many pictures like you showed in the first slide, or do we need such a good camera to take those pictures? And furthermore, um, can we just exchange one for another? For example, if I have a bad camera like my phone and I'm somewhere where I want to record something, can I just take a lot of pictures and uh, not worrying about the processing time? and then get the same quality of the reconstruction as if I would, take, would have taken a good camera and only a few pictures. And that question was actually um, quite interesting to us, so we decided we want to do a further analysis and very systematic analysis about that. This is what I'm going to talk about now. And when we are talking about um, quality, we're not talking about this kind of quality where we see the Lego brick looks actually quite nice, it's a nice textured model, but if you remove all the color and texture, we see that it's actually quite broken and quite faulty and we have soft edges, which we could not see here. So when we're talking about quality, we want to have this kind of quality, not this kind of looks nice quality um, that we unfortunately see quite often on some reconstructions which makes it impossible to mirror something later. For example, if we have a wall and we want to measure the size of a brick, then we can't use this kind of reconstruction, although it looks quite nice, just as an example. So our equipment, what did we use? We have a full-frame camera, which has 36 uh, megapixels and has a yeah, full-frame sensor, which means the sensor is quite big and gives quite nice um, images. And as a drone, we used the DJI Phantom 4 Pro, which has 20 megapixels, and you can see it here. Um, as a software or hardware part, as a computer, we have a quite, um, if you want to attempt to test, maybe it's better if I stand here, <laughs> which has um, 10, 10 physical cores or 20 cores, 25 megabytes cache, so it's quite um, capable, has a lot of memory, and two quite beefy um, graphic cards to tackle those uh, reconstructions that we do. And we use Agisoft Photoscan, as most of you, I guess, for the reconstruction. They are, of course, um, like free, like Visual SFM, free versions of free software that we could use, but they lack some features that we need, or they are also more expensive software, which for exactly that reason we don't have. So all our analysis bases um, on um, Agisoft Photoscan. And for our um, the analysis at the end of the results, we use Cloud Compare, which also has been talked about a lot today. So basically, what did we do? We have a lab set up and uh, we did some real world examples outside. And as a lab set up, we have this um, small robot arm where we place the camera on top. So we can move the camera quite precisely and reproducibly um, below millimeter um, accuracy. And we have, we can't see it here, but we have an object on a, um, on a table that rotates. So we can reach all the positions around this ob uh, object in a semi dome. And we chose um, record positions, which are shown here as the um, points of the mesh or closer one. So we have um, versions where we have 340 pictures, 250 and 90 pictures. So we did a series to see how um, the number of pictures affect the quality. And also, um, as another factor, we downsized the pictures that we took 
like 100%, which are the 36 me uh, megapixels, 9 megapixels, which is 50%, and 25%, which is around 2.3 megapixels. So basically, good camera, medium camera, bad camera equivalent, just to see how this affects. And for the first object, we had just a few wooden blocks together. It's quite simple, but it has a lot of structures. So for structure for motion, it has enough to reconstruct. Here we see the Algosoft um, dome with the reconstructed cameras. We chose this simple object because we can just measure it quite uh, precisely with a caliber. And when we um, reconstructed it, we found out that our reconstruction is, of course, using those markers, which we see here, is accurate to 0 0.16, like about one or two tenths of a millimeter accurate. So we can assume, if we take the best reconstruction, that this is quite um, good as a reference. What we did then, we see here, we took take reference, which is 340 pictures with 100% resolution. In this direction, we downsize, and in that direction, we, um, yeah, we really reduce the number of pictures. And as we can see here, if we reduce it a little bit, then um, it does not really affect the quality much. But if we reduce um, the resolution, we see quite an effect on the edges. They are not so clear anymore. Um, furthermore, this is just um, pictures. But if you want to have it in numbers, we can have a look that um, the uh, computation time, which is also a quite interesting factor, is if you have the highest resolution and the um, full size image, you have a really, really high um, computation time. This is 15 to the, um, to the power of 4, which is about uh, 40 hours of computation time for the longest one. And we see we drastically can reduce this if we um, reduce photos and resolution. At the same time, if we take a look at the error that we have, here we need to be careful that the axes are inverted. Um, we see that, of course, as is expected, the lowest number of pictures with the lowest resolution makes the biggest errors, but we also see that we have a big error when we choose a low resolution and the number of pictures does not really matter much. If we put it in another kind of graph, which I hope is not too small, here we have the uh, time that it took to compute and here we have the error. We see that Basically, here are also all the 25% downscaled um, pictures, 25% downscaled pictures, which means it does not really matter how many pictures you take, the quality will always be bad. Here we have kind of a sweet spot where we have medium number of pictures and half of the resolution. And of course, this is the longest one and the most accurate one because it's our reference. So kind of, you can see that here is like a sweet spot between time and quality. Um, but that was just an academic example. We also want to test it on a real object. So we have here um, a tobacco pipe, which was lent to us by Reichsegenhorn Museum from Mannheim. And we, this has quite a lot of details, even though you might not see it here on the projector. And we did the same analysis as we had a wooden block before. Here, just a few examples. We see that as, as soon as we reduce the number of pictures, we get introduce more errors. But if you look closely, the white arrow is about like three tenths of a millimeter, so it's also quite small actually. Um, same graphs as before. You see here, computation time is always as high, um, but it's not so high compared to the others as we saw it before. So basically, it means it does really matter if you have a simple object or a very detailed object. And also, the arrow we see something quite interesting that. A medium number of pictures has more errors, which we consider to be an artifact on the case that the, we, have, we have 90 pictures or 340 pictures. The pictures are evenly spaced on the dome, on the semi-dome. But if we take 250 pictures, they are not completely um, equidistant anymore. So that might be an artifact. Nevertheless, if we take a, this, take a look at this graph again, we see the 25% scaled pictures are a little bit more stretched out, but still we have um, the same idea that the sweet spot is about 250 pictures and 50% um, downscaling. So basically here we can see if we downscale um, the pictures and the number of pictures, then we get kind of a sweet spot. But we can also see that this one is like less pictures, but still full resolution. We get the same error, almost the same error as here, 
but we have a much longer time to compute, almost three times. So we can see just taking more pictures does not really help much if you already have a high resolution image. Um, furthermore, we wanted to test um, also like a real world example, but uh, also in the lab. We have um, two pieces of paper glued together quite precisely, and we have 26 markers here. And we took uh, a lot of pictures also with the robot, so they're really precisely, accurately um, spaced. And this can be like, for example, a wall that you have or a facade that you're trying to um, reconstruct. And we wanted to see how does the number of markers you choose and propagate uh, the error. And these are a lot of plots, but actually it's quite easy. We see all dots are those markers. And if it's green, then we use those markers for the reconstruction. And if they're blue, we just use them to estimate the error that was introduced. And black is quite good and white is quite bad. So we see kind of um, could get expected. If you just fix it in the middle, then of course the error propagates to the side. If you just fix a few, then the error is okayish overall and well distributed. If you fix a few more, then you get a little bit better result. If you fix it only at the end, then also like we expect, we get um, error in the, in the center. But what is also quite nice, if we just take all of them, then we can see that um, the error is quite well distributed, that's fine. But in total, it is not so much better than actually this result. If you just take a look at the colors. So it means you can take a lot of markers and you can spread the error yeah, evenly, then um, does not help so much. And of course, what you should never do is just take one end, because then you see at the other end, here the worst error is 0.3 millimeters, here it is two millimeters. So yeah, you should never do that. And then we just had another quick example. It's um, a monastery, or the remains of a monastery that we took, just with copters, um, no markers, only GPS, only um, the GPS of the copter, which is not a very good one, a few pictures. And we could see that a few measurements showed that we are accurate of about three centimeters. It's also interesting to know if you just want to make a quick survey. Also, if you downscale it to 25%, we get a few more errors but it's quite okay if you say that um, green is about three centimeters, so only here we are worse than the actual construction, but it gets better, of course, if you take 50% scale, downscaled images. Okay, to conclude everything, um, just all the findings in a few words. If you have a low resolution camera, like for example, a GoPro, or you take a 4K video stream or something, then um, it does not really help to take so much more pictures. The accuracy will not improve much only the computation time, and that's something no one really wants. Um, if you want to have a fast computation time, like for on-site checks, then reduce the resolution and not the number of pictures, unless it's a very simple object, but normally when you're on-site, the objects are not simple. Um, if you want a really high accuracy, then you need a camera with a high resolution. I was actually hoping that we would find another result, but this is what we found out. And um, yeah. It goes also without saying, if you have too many pictures, you just increase the computation time, but not really the quality. And for the markers, we can say um, you should distribute them evenly. You do not have to place them on the object itself, but if you place them around, then you can also have a quite nice accuracy inside the object. And if you use a high number of markers, then you will just spread the error, but not really increase the accuracy much. And so, of course, this was only like a beginning. And we just looked into a few um, things, but of course, we did not take into account how much the pictures actually overlap and how um, that would affect computation time accuracy. And also, we did not take into account which distance we form, have from the object itself. This would also be something interesting to um, analyze more. And of course, if we have more pictures and more um, experiments, then we can have a more precise statistical analysis of everything. So, yeah. thank you for your attention.